My name is Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional biking kit tester for over 25 years. And this bike here is the Titanium Titus Gold Rush 700C Gravel Adventure Bike. And I was pretty sure I'd shot a nice sunny intro to this bike uh, out in Morocco, uh, in the Atlas Mountains, which is where I've been taking it for a 400 kilometre adventure. So testing this and the Silk Road Adventure Mountain Bike through properly testing conditions, some crazy terrain and some beautiful scenery and some fantastic friendly people that we met on the way. But unfortunately, I've lost that intro clip. The good news is I've got all the other riding clips. So that's enough of me talking to you from a freezing workshop in Yorkshire. Well, let's jump straight back into the African action and you can see just how capable this top value but also premium performance titanium gravel bike can be on our little Moroccan mission sponsored by Titus themselves. And you can get this bike in the full range of SRAM specs and Campag e car as well. But this is the basic rival Axis Explorer group. So it's the cheapest way to get onto wireless and that awesome 1044% on the back, which when you're pedaling in scenery like this, it's just really nice having those extra gear ratios. Oh, look at that. This is amazing. Yes, Morocco. And you've got Selkoff 42 centimeter bar, with a little bit of flair on it, nothing extravagant. And of course you've got your SRAM rival axis, shifters there, and it all looks super clean. It does mean that bar's a bit narrow, narrower than it would be obviously with the gear cable underneath, but, and you might, you know, the bar tape I would say is basic rather than luxurious, but it's fine. And then just running this little pod sacks. Got two bottle bags there behind the stem. And then that's actually one of the fork bags on the front, but those little pods there work great just for trail snacks. And then I've got my pump and more snacks in there just so they're handy. But, but you don't have to just use strap on bags. You've got trouser mounts on the forks there for an anything cage, anything cage mount on the down tube. Second and third bottle cage mounts. You've got rack mounts and mud guard mounts at the rear. You've got mud guard mounts on the fork as well. And if you look down at that rear dropout, you've got that really neat sliding system. So you can tension your chain. I'll just change the geometry. But all those features, obviously, each one adds weight. So. It's not the lightest titanium bike you can find. It's not even the lightest one in the sort of Planet X family. Have a look at the Tempest if you want a lighter kind of... It's tighter angled as well as the Tempest. So it's kind of your more sporting, racy gravel bike, whereas it's very much an expedition gravel bike. And also once you add rival axis as well, which is relatively hefty, you're looking at 10 kilos overall weight which and this is the landscape you're riding in and that means you have to bear that into mind but in terms of shifting and in terms of those ratios that rival is super welcome and actually because it's got a slightly different clutch to the red and force max it's more like the mountain bike clutch i think it actually shifts better Ryan's obviously on the 29 of Silk Road now. So he's got the wider bars, the dropper posts on it, bigger 29er tyres. But actually, the angles on this gold rush is actually slightly slacker. 69.5, not 70 on that Silk Road. That little Titanium water churn I've got. Doesn't have to make a racket though. But that's the only thing disturbing this bike. Super composed otherwise. 
<laughs> and these hatches some twire egg tyres have actually has an upgrade on the standard spec which is WTB nanos but in terms of smoothness and grip and being able to run them tubeless is a really big advantage hydraulic brakes feel amazing Oh, bike feels amazing to be honest. It's not the lightest by any stretch. That's why you're thinking it's titanium, but really strong. You get a lifetime warranty on it, and already, just in case of, just in terms of when you've got stone spiring up, this makes a massive difference knowing that the frame is basically going to be fine because it's such a tough metal. You haven't, certainly haven't got any paint to worry about, have you? And having that overlaid top tube gives it a nice bit of spring vertically, but then lots of accuracy laterally. So together with this self-off fork, you can really carve it well. With loads of confidence. Again, that slack geometry really help it and because I've got the dropouts set long as well that makes it even more stable so add those nice Tuareg grippy tyres happy days on the descent this is kind of the only point where that slack of steering isn't an advantage and that's when you're kind of threading yourself through rocky single track at walking pace and it can just wander a bit more okay we're walking again and I'm back on the gold rush bon. That's last, that last bit. Pretty intense. I fell over twice just walking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice one, Gold Rush. Don't get too giddy. Just because you're rolling again. Haha. <laughs> Proper adventure ride in this. A rocking single track. Come on, tires be good, tires be good. I'm really, really glad for that smooth tie frame and that carbon fork <laughs> and that more stable handling. Surprisingly comfortable. Come on, get back on the track. There we go. That one's well, okay. Comfortable's maybe pushing it. As long as you kind of stay relaxed and floating, it is surprising what it'll roll over. <laughs> Although, I imagine that chesty GoPro is giving you a good idea of uh, how intense it is. And that super slack head angle really helps when you get pushed off by the roads on switchbacks like this too. And even on 700 by 40, it's happy taking on some pretty chunky terrain so far. Don't want to curse myself, but. And of course, if you want more tyre space, you can, sorry, more tyre volume, you can run 60B, 650B in it. And you're talking well over 50mm, whereas it'll run, it'll run 47. 
with 700 C's in. Way! <laughs> That's a neat illustration between the two bikes. <laughs> That's the difference between 700 by 40 and 29 by 2.3. Definitely. Put a bit more pressure in after yesterday. Felt the rim a couple of times. So it's not as easy on my wrists, but less nerve wracking over the roll. Slightly, anyway. I'm just finished, switched on to side the guides, borrowed cross bike. She's running some nice knockoff tube tyres. Although, the ride quality is similar to not riding the tyres at all. <laughs> In many ways, the noise, control, everything. But yeah, not tubeless, more tireless. Although weirdly, science to be being, science getting more tired on it. And he's quite old these days. I think he's just pampered. And of course, as it's probably lighter, you know, don't know why I struggled so much on the hills, really. But, enjoying that side? Yeah. <laughs> Different? It's good. Smooth. <laughs> I have to say, yeah, you know, there's a little bit of an advantage in tire drag, but the aerodynamics of having a narrower bar and a narrow position on the bike what really does help on these road sections. I don't think most people would pick this as a standard definition of a gravel trail. I mean, I have lowered the saddle a bit, but even so, you know, considering yesterday it was the prime mover on the road for about 25 miles, right? It was a massive advantage having this position this rolling speed does pretty damn well on rocky Atlas Mountain single track. And like I say, this is where you're glad you've got that titanium sturdiness and that lifetime warranty though. If you are doing this on the regular, probably pack. A spare mech hanger, just in case you lie it down on the drive side like I did. But again, I've been impressed how tough this rival axis is because we managed to blow it over twice when we were doing the pack shots as well. Oh, this is a bit what Simon said when he said it's a bit more jolty. I'm guessing. And you notice that Simon isn't on a cross bike anymore today. He's on a full suspension bike. Little chiseler. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to deny this has been challenging. But I'm annoyed, I'm annoyed I keep myself on the ground early on. So otherwise, this has been sick. Ah! We'll upslide it, why not? You know, 69.5 would have been radical on a cross country bike not long ago. And here I am behind drop bars. Oh, back end's taking some hits, but fair play to Max Titanium. Hey, this is fair. Whoa, shit. <laughs> Famous last words, that would have been a this is better, eat shit classic for Instagram. Right, this is actually pretty loose. And to be honest, I think you've had enough of Insta GoPro terror. I oh, don't know, one last bit, eh? Yeah! Woohoo! 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice guy. Guy hauling it. <laughs> this is what the gold rush loves. Swoopy. Not too rocky. I'm about to tube the back now. Plug. We had to put it in after Ryan scuffed it on his hero descent. On day four, I guess, yeah, day four. Stop holding. So it's amazing the difference it makes actually. I mean same pressures and everything, same tire, but you can feel it's a lot firmer at the back. I mean it's still a remarkably smooth ride, considering it's only a 40 mil tire, that titanium back end really is remarkably smooth, but yeah, definitely tell I've got a tube in there now. So that is the tightest gold rush live ride review done. 400k of Moroccan desert and mountains and a bit of road at the start and finish. Just one puncture, a mangled mech hanger, but I have absolutely loved this bike. Uh, I mean, there's going to be a load more content. There's a tech talk round. There's a uh, live ride review on the Titus Silk Road Adventure ATB that we rode at the same time. And there's a little mini Morocco adventure video as well. But this bike, definitely the one I preferred out of the two I've ridden here. Just noticeably quicker and still hangs in there when it gets really, really tough. So, massive thanks to Titus and Karnak and Planet X for supporting these videos and this adventure. Hope you've really enjoyed the content. Uh, like I say, check out all the rest of the stuff that's coming with it. Check out the written reviews as well on the website. Check out Global Bike Adventures, which is Simon's company. They'll be putting together a proper adventure based on this route, but maybe without some of the uh, more chaotic sections. But yeah, and thanks to you guys for watching. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe, click the notifications, give it a thumbs up so YouTube know you enjoyed it. And make sure you watch more content coming from On One and Planet X and Titus very shortly. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan. I'm in Marrakesh, Morocco. Yes, <laughs> As you can see. And this has been Titus Gold Rush. Titanium gravel bike and it's been a proper adventure buddy. <laughs>